Hello, hello, and hello. Okay, it's me, Indigo Sage, coming at you guys with the Real Housewives of New Jersey recap and review episode four. All right, where they go down to the Jersey Shore. Now, I do have my trusty book of soliloquies, except this time... The whole episode, everybody just getting one. Everybody just getting a, a super soliloquy, okay? But before I start, I want to ask you guys to comment if you know what movie this t-shirt is from, okay? All right. Ultimately, this episode was kooky. It seems half the group is obsessed with Louie. Marge and Joe, Melissa and Joey need storylines. They've talked about other people this entire time. The producers are messy and I don't trust them. They're sabotaging Louis before we get to know him. Teresa was all that Jennifer's got. And now... She left, believe it or not. Already, I want a new topic for the next episode. Can they switch gears? We'll see how it goes. Mm, mm, mm. Now, we are getting ready to recap and review and sage this out, okay? But first, I wanted to let you guys know that it happens to be eating Disorder Awareness Week. So, per norm, I am going to give you guys information for support for eating disorders immediately following this episode. And this time it's going to be a little different. I'm going to give you guys links to where you can read about and find out about the actual symptoms of an eating disorder. Now that that's out of the way, the seriousness, the heaviness of it all, let's get it started. Okay, and okay, we are at episode four. This one's not going to be long because you know what? You know what? It didn't give that much. So we are wrapping up with the fight. Okay. So basically, basically, Marge and Jennifer are being fake towards each other other after being forced to talk but before we get to that the fight does conclude and Jackie says that she's the first one with the balls to call out Dolores on her bullshit now Jennifer and Marge are left alone to talk and just like I said in the first review, Jennifer is triggered by Marge's bragging about her affair, okay? That was her trigger and she admits that. Now, let's not forget 
that Marge's children, they are estranged because of her affair. And they are not talking to her till this day. Get all the way into it. She has an issue with her children. The issue is that she did have the affair. So Jennifer's concern about how this will affect her children is a trigger for Marge. All right. They both trigger each other. Jennifer is triggered by Margaret being the other woman and writing about it, talking about it, boasting about it, being proud of it and breaking up a marriage. Jennifer is triggered by that. And I mentioned that in my first review. I realized somewhere in between that as Jennifer talks about wanting to protect her children and not wanting to say anything because of her children and not wanting her children to be hurt by this, guess what? That triggers Margaret's ass because Margaret's children are not talking to her because of the affair. Get all the way into it, okay? I'm always going to give y'all a different way to look at it. So come on, come through, come in to my space, my recaps and reviews, because I'm going to give you a different point of view, okay? I, I, I am. That's just me. I, I look everywhere where people didn't look at. Margaret is triggered. She's triggered because Jennifer keeps talking about her children. And let me tell you why I know that Margaret is triggered. Because Margaret's ass said that children are resilient. They'll get over it. They'll just get some therapy and they'll get over it. Bitch, what? Mm -mm. That was inappropriate. Disrespectful. But they're both triggered by each other coming from different points of views. And Margaret was completely out of line by saying your children will get over it. She said that in the second episode. Dolores asked Jackie to talk off to the side, okay? And she says that if she felt like Jen needed more support, she'd be there for her. But she said, with this, I feel she's okay. Cut to Jackie saying Dolores brushes off people's feelings all the time. And Jackie recalls not feeling okay last year. And this, she said, is what made her go deeper into her eating disorder. All right. So she also says a real friend doesn't assume that you get through it and that you're just fine. Now that's a quote. From Jackie about Dolores. Margaret in a confessional calls Jennifer sad and brainwashed. We can say that about Margaret as well when it comes to her children. So then we go into Jackie and her medical history of her eating pattern. And as she speaks to the facility they let her know that her eating pattern has led to high chances of a heart attack or heart trouble, heart issues, okay? Dolores has a family meeting. Dolores arrives first and second comes in Frank Jr., okay? And I just love the way she says, hi, little guy. That is so cute to me. It's so cute to me. Anyway, um, so then Gabby arrives and she tells them both that you guys are going to be living with your dad for the first time, full time. Okay, that's very interesting. And so she says to them, the kids, that we're going to set ground rules. I'm not laughing at the fact that <laughs> that ground rules need to be set. I'm laughing at the fact of this. She says, and I want it to be done while I'm here. 
Now, I'm glad that was said because this satisfies my curiosity and confusion because I thought in the first episode that she said this was her place and where she lives. All right. Which is why Margaret said this is a bachelorette pad. And then, you know, we see her children living in their house. So, and I've heard other people talk about the situation and I think other people are confused. And so let me clear this up for everyone because I never was confused until I listened to other people after. Okay, get into it. The only time I listen to other folks reviews is after I create my review. So I heard people being confused and, and here's the clarity. I've, I've gotten clear clarity, which I was clear in the first episode. Dolores has paid off. Well, not just Dolores by herself. She said we've paid off that house. So that house is the house that's be having the reconstruction and it was just meant for her two children to live in while she, okay, has her, as Margaret calls it, her bachelorette pad living the single life. Now, she's had to allow the children to move into her town home which you know the single life town home because Frank has not finished renovating the original home so the meeting is more so about Frank wanting to move back and Dolores allowing him to do so to which and that home, it will be Frank, the children, and Dolores is optional. Which is why Dolores says she wanted to have the sit down with them to establish house rules. Because she was on Watch What Happens Live last night and she has a boyfriend, bop, 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 which actually I hadn't heard about before last night. But anyway, she has a boyfriend and it ain't nothing wrong with getting everybody up out your house so you can live your life. There's nothing wrong with that. Go on, Dolores. Go, go on, Dolores. What, what, go on, Dolores. Eh. Go on, Dolores. Ew, ew. Okay, so anyway, um, so she's like, we're going to have a meeting because I want all y'all to just be good. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. I knew I hadn't misinterpreted. So nearly as soon as Frank sits down, <laughs> somebody says, no hoes, no bows. I'm like, What? But Frank begins to point out that both his children has had sex with their significant others while the parents have been home. Nastiness! Nastiness! Gabby says, but you can't hear it though. Unlike the girl you brought home from Texas, Frank says, it's not my fault your boyfriend doesn't satisfy you. Look at here. All that is too merch for me. It's just too merch. Jennifer and Bill are packing. And Jen packs a big peach colored hideous looking two piece. And she asks him what did he think of it. And he's silent. And then she feels in the silence with well it's a little too big for me. But I'm going to tell these bitches that it's due to stress that they've been causing. Jennifer, 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 Jennifer. I ain't never looked at her fashion. And I've never judged it because I, I haven't looked at it. But if you don't get your ass out of here with that bullshit, don't you lose yourself, girl. Flash to cut to Jackie and Evan. And Jackie tells Evan as they're packing and getting ready that... My first thought is, what am I going to do about lunch? And that's sad to me. Because she says, this is a vacation. I'm supposed to just be relaxing. But her thought is, 
what am I going to do about lunch? Apparently, I'm guessing, and allegedly, I'm just guessing, because she probably doesn't eat lunch. And so to be in front of this group, which is why, Bravo, I know Bravo planned this, because deep in my heart, ever since Jackie came on the scene and admitted that she had an eating disorder, like, she said it. I've been watching her, and she still had it this whole entire time. But Bravo edits and produces what they want to. Last season, first season, they didn't do it. Last season, she had it out with Teresa. That's what they wanted to promote, okay? This season, they has chosen to promote this as her storyline the eating disorder now what I don't like is a person allowing another person to be in charge of your life like that when she first came on she told us she had an eating disorder I've been watching her ever since she still had that eating disorder whether we saw it on our screen or not do you understand what I'm saying so Bravo apparently told her last year, we're going to go with this Teresa thing. Okay, we're going to play that up. They probably didn't tell her this season, we've been watching you and we know you have an eating disorder. And what we're going to do now is highlight that and push it. Okay, the producer is now saying everything that they need to say to her in order for her to get help. They could have said that the first time she graced our screen. They didn't. Allow me to clarify. They could have allowed that to be her storyline the first time she graced our screen. And they didn't. They waited until it was convenient for them. And it makes me wonder, what is a producer's job? And I know I'm going in deep. I don't care. That's what I do sometimes. What is the producer's job? Because she's been had an eating disorder. She didn't just now have it in her third season. She's been at it. I've been watching her. She's been at it. But the editors edit and do what they want. Because this season, on the first episode, they go right into her plate. The women have been asking her. Every once in a while, they sprinkle one or two in. Asking her about her eating. What are you going to eat? Why aren't you eating? Da, 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 da. They just sprinkle that in. Jackie tells Evan that they will be staying at the Gorgas and she says remember the Gorgas at their house you must have sex so she says you'll be so lucky and Evan says what are you talking about you're the lucky one anyway I thought that was cute I thought that was cute and here's the thing those type of moments those little couple moments that we see with all of them They are extremely enduring, and I would like more from Teresa and Louie. And if these mofos could just stop talking about Louie's video, which is a stupid thing to talk about because he didn't do anything wrong, if they could just stop talking about that, I think we could get more you know, storyline and cute moments from Teresa and Louie. So let me know in the comments, would you guys like more couple bonding, more coupleness, more cuteness from Teresa and Louie? Okay, because I would, but just because I would doesn't mean that you have to. Let me know how you guys feel about Teresa and Louie in the comments. Then they do cut to Dolores and Frank settling in and Dolores ends up having to tell Frank don't bring up David she says I try not to cry now two things Frank is surprised Frank says you cried you crying over David I didn't even think you cried about our divorce Dolores said I did cry you just didn't see it okay now this tells us a lot about Dolores Because Dolores is the one that Jennifer has come out now and admitted and confirmed what I already said. Which was Dolores was telling Jennifer not to cry. And 
And basically, they keep hounding her and telling her to stop crying. Now, Jennifer, it appears to me that she's looking at Dolores and saying, Oh, you think I'm weak for crying? You think I'm weak for crying? No, honey, I'm strong for crying. I am strong for crying. And Jennifer was upset behind that. Dolores herself needs to cry, but she tries not to. Okay? So, Jennifer crying is a trigger for Dolores. Get yourself all the way into it. All right? Because here in my reviews and my recaps, I sage this out. My last name ain't sage for nothing, baby. Okay? And if you want to know how much I sage, go to unapologeticallysage.com and you will see I'm always going to sage things out logically all right Dolores doesn't like to cry but she needs to cry wants to cry she cries in private she doesn't want anyone to see her cry which is why she approached Jennifer in the manner of which she did and in this episode she admits that that night was the night, the night she wanted to kick Jackie's ass was the night that she had broke up with David. So where where did all that crying energy go? She was going to put it in Jackie's ass. Okay, they're all packing to go to the shore houses. Melissa is hosting this one. In her house is Marge and Joe, Jackie and Evan, and Tracy and Tiki, although Tiki will arrive later because he is working. Jennifer rents a house on the beach for her and all of their children, there being her and Bill. Bill also has to work and will join them later. Teresa got her plans mixed up, her weekends mixed up, so she'll be staying with Jen because Louie and his kids and her kids and Louie's parents are staying in her shore house. Teresa says Louie will join them later. Jackie and Marge carpool there. Evan says Tiki and Louie are great additions to the group. <sighs> Marge the mouth disagrees. Marge says his family doesn't even like Louie. However, He's with his parents and kids at Teresa's house, and we saw his brother cooking with them in the last episode. So Marge must be referring to some distant cousins ten times removed. All right. So whatever. Whatever, messy Marge. Whatever. Teresa is hosting a barbecue at Jen's Shore home because Louie's parents and all the kids are at her Shore house. So... It does seem like Louie and his family are private people, and I think that's good. And the reason why I'm saying it seems like they're private people, because if they weren't so private, then she still could host it at her shore house, okay? The more the merrier. That's, that's how I see it, as long as they're positive, you know? Now, Messy Marge would most likely offend Louis and his parents and his kids, and without giving it a second thought. So, I do see why Teresa kind of is drawing the line in the sand. Okay, no pun intended. No pun intended. Melissa mentions that Jen rented a shore house literally down the street. So what? What does she have to mention that for? And she seemed a little salty about it. But while being salty, her and Joe fill a water cooler with vodka instead of water as a prank. Now, <laughs> once the other ladies and their husbands arrive, Joey offers Marge water, all right? Now, it's vodka, okay? And so, Margaret chokes gags literally on it and calls him a sick fuck, all right? Then we see Evan take a sip of it. Now, my question to you guys listening, all right, and drop down in the comments and let me know, if you've seen someone gag on something and call somebody a sick fuck, would you still drink it? Would you still drink it? Okay. So, 
after Dolores and Frank has settled into their beach house, um, they all meet up at the beach. So Dolores and Frank arrive first, and then it's Jennifer and Teresa. Honey, let me tell you, Dolores could not wait to see Jennifer because she eases on into a conversation about Jackie. And what she says is, okay, so you think this person is your friend. Let me tell you what your good friend had to say about you that night of her party when we all were going home. She tells Jennifer that Jackie said, I don't feel bad because how about her husband doesn't stick his D in anybody else? Okay, so cut to Jennifer having a confessional saying, oh my gosh, that's so vulgar. Oh my gosh, that's so vulgar. I can't believe that she said that, especially about someone who actually did cheat. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, since then, I've seen Jackie being interviewed and she says that even though it sounds vulgar, that's not the way that she meant it, the way that, you know, Dolores delivered it. She said what the women were saying was that they felt bad for Bill. And what she said was, I don't feel bad for Bill because he should not have stuck his D in someone else. Of course, Bravo plays the clip and even though neither one of them get it 100% right, you know the truth is somewhere in the middle. The truth in this case lies a little more closer to what Jackie said. All right, moving right along. Teresa announces that the barbecue will be at Jen's. So at this point, all of them have met up at the beach because Melissa says today is a beach day. Now, I, when she said that, I actually thought that they were going to get in the water. They do not get in the water. The men sit at a picnic bench and the ladies have those um, like lawn chairs, pool chairs or whatever you call them in a half circle and they're sitting in the sand and that's the beach day. They could have did that at a kitchen table. I mean, I, that didn't make any sense to me. Beach day to me means you guys are, you know, having a little picnic on the beach and you're going out in the water and having a good time, letting the waves slap your ass, you know? It was none of that. It was none of that. Just more gossip, except for the scenery changed. <laughs> All righty then. Um, so... Again, Teresa announces that the barbecue will be moved to Jennifer's house and there's an awkward silence except for Tracy who thanks Jennifer for um, hosting and, and allowing them to be in her house and she says that she really appreciates it. And I appreciate the fact that Tracy is speaking up like her or not or not like what she's saying or not, at least she's speaking up and talking. Because again, as I said last time, if she says nothing, we're going to all be upset about that. Just like another one that they were testing out, I noticed they were testing out, she was in the green at Dolores' house. Her name was Caroline or Carolyn or Caroline. She has no lines, okay? So a lot of you guys probably didn't even notice her, but we've noticed Tracy, <laughs> Okay, because she's speaking up, which is what a housewife is supposed to do. Now, in their separate groups, Margaret compares Louie to a car salesman. And in the guys group, her husband, Joe, who I affectionately call Joanna, he goes ahead and disses Louie by saying, where there's smoke, there's fire. Now, what I want to know is what is Marge and Joanna's storyline where there's no line there's no story okay they bravo editors bravo editors please tell me that you guys did not allow for Margaret and Joe to ski skirt on this season not having a storyline except for being the antagonist when it comes to Louie because see they've already squashed supposedly allegedly all right the beef with Jennifer and so now you guys are just gonna harp on Louie? How is that your storyline? That's cheating. All right? Like if we had to take a test, that's cheating. That's cheating. That's cheating, cheating, cheating. Um but anyway, Marge ain't that 
dumb though because she waits until Jennifer, Teresa, and Dolores all, I believe they go to the restroom, okay? Which is when Marge compares Louis to a car salesman. Ugh. And now, Louis calls Teresa and tells her that he doesn't want to come right as she's getting ready for hosting the barbecue night at Jen's. Cut to Melissa. They're all um, around the pool. The men are in the pool. The women are in a half circle. So uh, automatically it looks planned. And Melissa's making a scene with a grand announcement that Teresa just texted me. <laughs> I could swear that I heard a, a drum roll. And that she reads the text and it says, do not say a word and make sure you do not talk about Louie and that you do the right thing. What I find hilarious is right before going to the group, Melissa reads Teresa's text to herself alone in the kitchen and says to herself but out loud, oh god there's always gotta be something. Then she creates a scene for herself by telling the group, Melissa you just made it something. You did. I'm pretty positive Teresa didn't intend for her to run out and read that text to everybody because otherwise Teresa would have sent it to them if that's what she intended. And now cut to producers talking to Teresa and the producers say to Teresa, we talked to Louie in the parking lot. He feels like everyone is talking about him and he wants to know why. All right. Now, at this point, I have to question how much of a hand producers lend to the situation. Why does Louie, a man who's simply in his vehicle driving to Jen's house alone, mind you, feel like the cast is talking about him? Is he psychic? Does he have ESP? If not, then I deduce the producers told him, and now they're in Teresa's face acting innocent hiding the hand that just threw the rock okay Teresa confirms with the producers that she in fact told Louis if he feels uncomfortable not to come okay baby not to come okay baby don't come if you feel uncomfortable all right so here's the fork in the road for me either Teresa needs to continue recording per her job description all right because when we get a job it lists our duties all right when we apply for the job there's a list of duties and we read the duties to see if we want to do the duties all right that's just how it goes Am I right or am I wrong? So either she needs to record per her job description or turn in her resignation. Now, I don't want to see Teresa go. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is this is a fork in the road for her because she gets up in that um, champagne pink uh, X, X the whatever it is, that big gigantic machine that drives, I forget what it was, a uh, 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 Range Rover, that pink champagne Range Rover, and drives off into the sunset along the beach. And while she does that, she tells the producers to go F themselves. And she gets into that big pink machine and ride off, okay? Now, um, this is why I said it's a fork in the road, sweetie. You need to decide what you're gonna do. Are you going to record, which is doing your job, if you don't want to do your job, then go ahead and turn in that resignation. Right now, this is my resignation of the conclusion of this review. All right. Okay. This is episode four. Drop down in the comments and let me know how you feel about The Real Housewives of New Jersey, episode four. This time, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to give you guys links to where you can read about and find out about the actual symptoms of an eating disorder. Some of the symptoms are not as obvious as you may feel like they are. Thank you.